Okay, and now we are ready to start our second class. Um, yes, or the stock trading course. And uh, the schedule for today. Uh, first of all, we will cover some material which is related to the first class. Uh, fortunately, I received uh, a lot of feedback from the feedback forms uh, containing some questions, and I will cover some answers to those questions. Then we will proceed to the main topic of uh, today's class. This is trading approaches. And maybe if we have enough time, we will be able to discuss common mistakes which uh, people make on uh, stock markets. And today we will have two breaks. So uh, there was feedback that we need more, more than one break. And okay, today we will have two. Okay, uh, we start with some additional materials to the first class and uh, just about uh, the process uh, about, uh, the, about this course. Uh, if you do not attend a class, you will be able to watch uh, the video recording of that class. Um, as for the first class, uh, it took place on Tuesday and on Wednesday. On Wednesday, uh, the video was available on YouTube, so that you uh, had time to watch it. And I hope that uh, if you miss uh, this class, okay, uh, if anyone misses this class, uh, he or she will be able to catch up. Um, in both cases, please. Uh, Fill uh, feedback forms, the feedback form which we will uh, see at the end of the class because it contains some uh, important questions. And if you have some questions uh, during uh, the class, uh, you can ask that question or you can, uh, you can write that question in the feedback form. And actually, if you, for example, if you are not satisfied with the answer during the class, or if we do not have enough time for all questions and answers, uh, you can write that question in the feedback form, and I will try to prepare the answer for the next class. Okay. Uh, some, uh, some, a few words about uh, the term price. As you remember, we had a slide with several terms. Uh, for example, price, order, ticker, bid, ask, etc. And what is price? Price, it is the price of the last executed order on the stock market. What does it mean? It means, uh, it means that if you would like to, if you see a certain price, it doesn't mean that you will be able to sell or buy your shares at that price because uh, it is just the price of uh, the last deal and after that uh, bid or ask can increase or decrease for example now the, there was uh, an executive order there was a deal for ten dollars per share and after that uh, and the highest bid will be twenty dollars. In this case, you will not be able to buy something for ten dollars. Is this clear with price? Okay. Let's go further. So uh, it, it means that if you would like to buy or sell shares, you should uh, you should look for uh, bid and ask uh, values, not for the price. Price you, you can see price, but sometimes. Uh, Sometimes the situation is changing very rapidly, so it is more reliable to see bid and ask values. About the schedule of the Moscow exchange, I didn't mention uh, this uh, schedule during the first class. Uh, so on your demo account, usually everything is available during 24 hours. Per day. Uh, during, uh, if, if you open a real money account, 
uh, you will see that Moscow Exchange is opened from 10 up to 6.40 p.m. Uh, there are some special periods before that time and after that time. Uh, we will not, uh, con we will not uh, concentrate on, the, on them. Uh, I will uh, give you some links. Uh, by the way, uh, after the previous class, after the first class, I published approximately 12 different links to different articles on Stellar. So please uh, read these articles because sometimes we do not have uh, just time to cover some topics. That is why uh, topics like uh, what is uh, the closing auction, uh, I publish a link on Stellar where you will be able to read an article about uh, this term. Okay. Type of orders. This is uh, the slide from the previous class. So we know that we can submit buy and sell orders and we, uh, we saw them and uh, during the practice session uh, I showed you how you can submit uh, a regular buy or sell order when you specify the price you are ready to pay uh, when you specify the company name, when you specify the number of stocks. There are two more different types of orders, stop loss order and take profit order. And we, uh, we need to cover these uh, two types of orders because they will be very important during the second part of today's class. What are these types of orders? Uh, the main principle behind these types of orders is that we would like to automate something. For example, you know that the price for Sberbank uh, shares today is 60 rubles, and you think that, or it's maybe 62, uh, and you think that uh, it's a good price to buy. So uh, you think that uh, if now the price is 62, in let's say in a month it will reach 80. In this case, for you, it, is, uh, it would be a good idea to buy these stocks. Uh, so you buy them, but you you are not sure when uh, the price for this stock will be equal to 80, and you do not uh, want to you know to sit uh, behind uh, the screen waiting for the price when the price will be 80 because you know uh, the stock exchange is open uh, Moscow stock exchange is open uh, nine hours every day and uh, it will be very boring for you to sit during days and days. In this case, you can put a take profit order. What does it mean? It means uh, that uh, you will fix profit when the price grows. When the price, so when uh, the price hits a certain value, there will be an automatic order for selling uh, those, uh, those stocks. And in this case, you can just submit, you can buy Sberbank today at 62. You can submit an order, a take profit order. And when the price hits this sum of money, you will not, uh, you will not, uh, it will not be necessary for you to be with your laptop. So we, everything will be automatic. The same idea with stop loss orders. Stop loss orders, uh, the main idea is to prevent you from uh, uh, from uh, losing a lot of money. So you know that the price for Sberbank today is 62. You would like to limit your risk because you know if the price is 62 and you buy it for 62, maybe tomorrow the price will be equal to 30 and you will lose half of your money. It is not a good scenario. You can uh, limit your losses and you can put a stop loss order, for example, to, 50, uh, to 58. It means that if the price hits 58, there will be an automated order to the stock exchange to sell, uh, that, uh, to sell uh, your stocks. So in this case, uh, again, you will not need to sit uh, with your laptop. Uh, it, uh, everything can be done automatic. And uh, this is actually uh, a lot of, I can say, most of advanced traders use this uh, types of orders just because they are not able to uh, to 
follow the market 24 hours per day. Okay. Uh, there was a question, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's not about this specific topic, but how I can uh, get access to a real price of some stocks without opening a real money account? This is a good question. Uh, okay. I have a slide. Do anything with it just to observe this. Uh, if you remember during the first class, there was a slide uh, saying uh, something like where to find uh, historical uh, data. And uh, there was a list of websites. Uh, it was uh, at the end of the presentation. Uh, actually, I will have uh, a similar slide today. And so there was a list of web links where you can find the historical data. More than that, you will not be able just to find uh, prices uh, which, um, which were, let's say, a year ago. You will be able to see prices which, uh, you will be able to see current prices. Sometimes uh, stock exchangers require some delays in prices. For example, if you visit uh, the finam.iu website, uh, you will see the, not the current prices for stocks on Moscow Exchange, you will see them with a 15 minute delay. So for example, uh, now let's say it's uh, for uh, 35, you will see now prices for 4.20 p.m. Uh, the, same, uh, the same idea works with other stock exchangers. Sometimes they have delays, maybe 10 minutes or 15, 15 minutes, uh, sometimes they do not. Is it possible to get real data? Real time data? Is it possible? Real time data? Yeah. Uh, you can, uh, the uh, uh, easiest way is to open a real money account. So, yes. Yeah. Okay, and in this case, you will get access to a lot of tools of your broker. And uh, a lot of, there are a lot of automated tools. So, uh, at uh, those websites, you will need to you know, refresh the page every minute or every second. Uh, sometimes, Yes, sometimes it is possible to download data, but still I think the easiest way is to open a real money account. Okay. Ah, okay, yeah, sure. Sorry, is it... Uh, Lose a lot, like we from uh, we have a price uh, close to 58, and then it's just automatically going down to 30, and we have to sell it. Yeah, but uh, this is the way how you can uh, prevent losing a lot of money because uh, this uh, the process um, you see here if stop loss is equal to 58. Um, when the price hits 58, uh, there will be an automated uh, order on the stock exchange. So it will prevent you from losing uh, a lot of money. So uh, it, it will not... Uh, sometimes it is possible that there will be, you know, uh, an, instant, uh, an instant decrease, but it is very unlikely. Yes, please. At which price we would push the order? For example, the current price is 58, so I, will, I need to put my uh, ask for, for a low, either lower price to sell it instantly, or to add it at uh, the same price, but it, it, can be, uh, it can happen that I will not sell 58, because the price is going down. Uh, do you mean uh, just regular orders? Yeah, I suppose I, uh, I made a stop loss uh, order, so uh, the price goes to, to this uh, level, and uh, at which price will put my, my ask? Mm. So basically the, 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 the price, price changes very rapidly, and you have put the stop loss at 58. I think, I, think, I think it will be exactly at 58. Yeah. Actually, the exact mechanism uh, it is, uh, it is a bit complicated, and uh, I, can, uh, you know, I can give you a link to the article which explains uh, this, you know, um, maybe math or techniques or algorithms which took, take place uh, on the stock exchange. But actually you can be, uh, maybe not 100, but 99% sure that uh, you will restrict your losses in this case. And uh, sometimes one more important point is that sometimes um, there is, so uh, the um, stock exchange doesn't work 24 hours usually. Uh, they work uh, 24 hours on the on demo account. So uh, on real money accounts and real stock exchanges, they do not work during 
the whole the whole day, and when um, when the stock market opens at 10 a.m., actually the price is not equal to the close price of the previous day. For example, if uh, the closing price for yesterday for Sberbank was 62, it is possible that today, during the opening at 10 a.m. sharp, the price will be equal to 60. It means that uh, there is a gap. It, it is called a gap. Well, well, why, why it happens? No one is making a transaction. How it could be? Uh, because, uh, to, the, as I understand, in order to change the price, some people need to sell it and buy it. There, yeah. there, there should uh, be a transaction. I think but how, how, the, how the exchange works? Uh, they they gather all orders, and uh, he, and uh, the price is determined after after that. So because they gather orders, and we can see the price. When uh, when uh, um, the exchange is closed, most of orders uh, are eliminated from the stock market, and so they uh, and okay, and then. For example, the last deal was, uh, so what is price? The price, it's uh, the price of the last deal. So the last deal at, let's say, uh, 6.40 p.m. was at price 62, the last deal. Then uh, the next day comes, and uh, at 10 a.m. there are orders to buy at, let's say, 59, and sell for 61. And in this case, you will not be able to uh, sell for 62 because it's just another day and new orders are on the market and it doesn't matter that the price the closing price of the previous day was 62 because now you can't uh, the, there are no orders so they were deleted from the stock exchange so do you okay. make a nice list Uh, because, you know, uh, first of all, here you can see that uh, the exchange is opened for 8 hours 40 minutes. There are certain periods before and after that. Actually, there are more periods of time before 8.45 and after uh, 6.50. And uh, the stock exchange needs some time and resources to process all, all, all deals which were made during the day. So there are special, uh, at least, uh, for example, there is a special, um, it is so-called cleaning period, which, take, take play, which takes place uh, between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. on Moscow Stock Exchange, when uh, software gathers all information about the deals which were made on the market, and it, uh, in, in, it updates uh, all the records, etc. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it means that if something bad will happen during the day with the, soft with the software, so uh, a lot of deals will be not accessed. Uh, they have, uh, I think they have uh, rather reliable systems, so they duplicate uh, information about orders, and if uh, sometimes there, is, there, is, there are situations when something goes wrong. In this case, they just stop uh, the trading period for, let's say, for half an hour, for an hour. They fix all bugs and, they, and then they continue, they continue. Okay, yes, please. Quick question. Back to the topic uh, on what changes the price of, uh, of anything, of, of, the, uh, of any stocks in the morning. So. For example, if the stock exchange opens at 10 and there's uh, a bunch of orders for buying with the price less than the price of closing of last deal yesterday, that means that there is a chance of someone who makes a good guess or whatever statistical analysis for the least price possible to buy at this price. So if you're saying that the last deal uh, price was 62 yesterday, and uh, this morning I'm trying to buy at 59, and if someone sells at 59, if, I, if I'm successful in the morning, I will be the first one to get that deal. Yes, you, you can be, but you know that uh, you should understand that uh, a lot of people saw the closing price of yesterday and uh, they uh, 
you can't sell at that price, but you understand that if the price yesterday, the closing price was 62, it doesn't mean that uh, anyone would sell at 58 or 30 without any significant reason. Okay. It means that, okay, I know that yesterday the price was 62, why should I sell at 58? Mm -hmm. If I sell at 58, okay, it's my decision. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky enough to catch that order, but it will be really difficult uh, because of high frequency traders. Uh, today we'll cover that as aspect. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of people who, you know, who, are, who sit closer to the stock exchange and they will, they will see crazy orders like that before you. Okay. Okay. And, um, okay, we covered this topic, we covered this topic. Um, okay. What to read? Um, I got uh, several questions uh, in the feedback form about special readings, especially for books. So we had our first class, uh, our first class was actually an introductory class. We understood how we can submit orders to the stock exchange. And this is actually uh, not a topic which, uh, which is used to write a book. It, uh, this is a topic for, for an article. But today we'll cover some topics, which, which uh, also uh, are covered in different books, and I, I will give references um, after the class. So I will again publish links on Stellar. So again, uh, I will already publish some articles on Stellar for the first class. Uh, today or maybe tomorrow, I will publish uh, more articles for this class. And I think that I will publish uh, references to some books, maybe at least for two books. Okay. Well, this is actually Q and A session. Yeah. So you, you have mentioned about the books. Is it really useful to read like different articles in the internet and, for example, forums on stock trading? Since like uh, there will be more concentrated information rather than reading whole book. On the topic and not catching the, the nuts and the bolts. Uh, it's a good question. Actually, I think that uh, both uh, both reading books and articles on the internet uh, they both are useful. Uh, actually, in um, usually articles cover a narrow topic, while books uh, cover some wide aspects. As for trading approaches, which is the trading approaches are the topic of today's class, uh, this, uh, this topic it deserves to be, you know, to be explained in a book, because it's a very wide topic. As for, let's say, high, fre high frequency trading, for example, uh, it, it also actually deserves to a book, but maybe you can read an article about that. Okay, any more questions? Okay, now we'll... Yeah, what, what do we know now? Now we know that there are ways how we can submit orders, orders to the exchange. We saw this picture last time. We saw it in real time, so you remember this blinking red and green lights. And we, okay, we saw all this stuff. What we can do now? Okay, we can do this. We can put uh, three charts together. We can put, uh, let's say this is a weekly chart, this is a six month chart, and this is, yeah, this is seven day chart, this is one day chart. Uh, we can put three charts together, we can put, let's say, 10 charts together. And uh, still the question remains uh, which uh, stock to buy. And uh, I'm not sure that you can determine that uh, looking at uh, these charts. That is why uh, we are going to cover trading approaches. And in trading approaches, we'll try to understand how advanced traders, how successful traders uh, make decisions about which stock to buy, which stock to, to sell. Okay, and my traditional disclaimer, your money is your money. 
especially it, it's especially especially important for this lecture because we are going to cover some trading approaches and there will be some advice about uh, trading and in this case you should understand that uh, you and only you are responsible for all decisions you make with uh, real money okay and actually as for trading approaches there are several, uh, there are several widely known trading approaches first of them is uh, fundamental analysis what is fundamental analysis it is an approach when we analyze company's financial uh, situation, when we analyze its revenue, when we analyze its profit, uh, financial statement, and let's say management team, etc. etc. The second approach is, uh, is technical analysis. In technical analysis, we usually do not, we do not uh, consider the financials of a company, we consider some uh, behavioral information about the market. For example, trends. If we see a trend, which is, let's say, growing, if we see a growing trend, sometimes we do not need to know with, uh, what company it is. And, uh, yes, so this, is, this approach is based not on company's information, it is based on the current dynamics of the price on the market. And uh, actually, today uh, I forgot to take my prizes. Uh, I will uh, bring them to the next class, but still there is uh, a question for the first prize. Um, and uh, today the prizes are even more tasty than uh, chocolate bars. <laughs> And you will receive them during the next class, but still, <laughs> this, these are two trading approaches. What is the third trading approach? Hybrid. Combination. Yeah. Sorry? Hybrid one. Probability theory. <laughs> More fortune. <laughs> Common sense. What? <laughs> Wave analysis. Statistics. Quantum Probability. <laughs> Random madness. Yes! Yeah. Right, and this is random trading. Okay. Okay, please write me, write me an email uh, so that I will, <laughs> I, I will be able to understand who, who won the prize. And this is what we did during the first class. This is called random trading. It is, um, let's go a bit further. Uh, this is one of the reasons why 10% 10 10 of traders are successful and 90% are, are unsuccessful because some of those 90% are in this, uh, use of this approach. And so this is the approach we used during our first class. Uh, let's say this is the most dangerous approach to, for trading. Okay. Now we are going to cover uh, approaches one by one, except for the third one, because uh, you know everything for, about the third approach. Okay, yes. Uh, are any hybrid approaches really used in practice? I mean, those which analyze uh, at the same time some trends and stuff and at the same time technically analyzes using some natural language processing tools and use and stuff and I don't know um, and uh, reports. reports on those companies and combine all that bunch of information to make some decisions. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, we'll cover this. Uh, yes, I will cover these uh, uh, tricks uh, later on. Okay, now we are going to analyze uh, each of uh, these two approaches. Uh, we will not cover the third one. Uh, the first one is fundamental analysis. It's uh, it's a situation when we analyze uh, the company's financial statement, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and the most, uh, let's say, the most famous uh, trader who use fundamental analysis it's, is uh, Warren Buffett, and uh, now his wealth is more than uh, 70 billion dollars, and uh, the uh, valuation of his company uh, is more than, 
368 billion dollars. And by market cap, I mean market capitalization or the valuation of the company. It is a commonly used, uh, let's say, commonly used term. Uh, for example, if we would like to understand how much is this number, this is more than the valuation of all companies on Moscow Stock Exchange. Okay, so if you take Moscow Stock Exchange, some the valuation of all companies will get uh, less than this number, and this is uh, the valuation of just one company. Okay. What are the main concepts of the fundamental analysis? Uh, first of all, it's about analyzing companies' financial statements. Uh, we, when we use fundamental analysis, we do not only take into account the current financial statement of the company, we also try to look uh, to the future, and we take into account future perspectives. We make financial projections about future periods, about, uh, let's say, revenues in um, uh, the next year and in five years. We try to estimate something called fair company valuation. And additionally, investors evaluate the company management team. Let's go, uh, let's go deeper. Analyzing companies' financial statement. When we analyze companies' financial statement, it is sometimes boring and it requires uh, some special knowledge in uh, the financial field. We usually open a table like this, or even you know a larger table, and we try to see what what are the numbers here. For example, we look for the revenue, for profit, for uh, let's say for expenses, and we analyze the dynamics of uh, these uh, numbers. To use this approach, you need to use this technique. You need to understand uh, what uh, each of these uh, each of these terms mean. If you now let's say that we do not understand mo most of this term, but we can see let's say revenue, and we can see the dynamics of this revenue, and we can see that you know it was uh, 38, it was uh, 37, 39. Uh, during uh, the, let's say, the, uh, the last three months, it decreased a bit. So maybe the valuation of the company will also decrease. Right now, when we do not know uh, these terms, we can just uh, try to use common sense for, this, uh, for these numbers. If you'd like to use this technique, you need to read at least articles for each of these terms. And uh, this, uh, how, how you can get this information? For Companies which uh, are trading on stock exchanges, this information is open to public because it's you know, a public stock exchange. And uh, you can find this information uh, on Google Finance or on Yahoo, or I will have uh, a list of resources with links where you can uh, get this information. This, uh, this technique requires some deep uh, financial, knowledge, financial knowledge. Okay. So, but what is minority interest? Minority? Yes. Yeah. Actually, I, I don't know what is it. Uh, Those number is very, very small. Yeah, it's... Uh, actually... It's like a pay for each stock? No. no. I mean that... Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, I don't know. <laughs> Only some of these voices are common internationally. Some of them you have to go into the financial statement and understand what it means for the company. Ah, okay. They define themselves. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, the main point of this technique is that you need to have deep uh, knowledge in finance to understand these uh, financial statements. If you would like to use this technique. Okay. And actually, uh, let's say that the goal of today's class is to give you the over overview of trading approaches. 
So you will be able to avoid just random approach and you will uh, see what are the approaches uh, which are used on the market so that you will be able to go deeper, you can, so you will be able to select one and go deeper in uh, those techniques. So my goal for today is to describe you all these techniques for you so you will be able to, you know, to study one of them, at least one of them deeper. Okay. Future perspectives. What does it mean? It means that we try to evaluate the perspectives of the company. How it will perform, not today, in terms of profit, but maybe in several years. For example, Twitter. Let's take Twitter. Now, Twitter loses approximately $50 million every month. And if we just take, let's say, the previous approach and see this uh, company statement for Twitter, we will see a lot of minuses. And uh, actually, yeah, in average, uh, Twitter loses approximately $50 million every month. It's more than half a billion during the year. But a lot of investors believe that uh, this company uh, has certain perspectives because it has several hundreds of, million, of millions of users, so it will be able to monetize these users during the next years. And for Twitter, uh, as, uh, in comparison with the previous uh, technique, if for, uh, for, this, uh, for companies like General Motors, you should look for news, for example, which, describe, uh, which describes the current, let's say, current revenue for Twitter, it would be better to look for news about their plans. What are they planning to do? When, uh, when they will be able to generate profit instead of losses. And still, despite the fact that this company loses, in average, more than half a billion dollars every year, the, it's a market capitalization, valuation, exceeds $25 billion. This is because of uh, this technique used by a lot of investors. And uh, maybe they are right, because uh, we saw the same thing with Facebook. Facebook uh, also generated losses for several years. Finally, it's a company now which uh, has a valuation of more than a couple of hundreds of billion dollars. So it's approximately eight or nine times larger than this company. Nice question. Yes. So it's up to a uh, type of industry where the company is to use uh, approach, one of the approach, right? Uh, yes, it's a good point. Actually, in most, in most, in most cases, it, it depends on the industry. Mm -hmm. So it correlates or it's just like, okay, Twitter is about future, right? It's better to use future perspective analysis for um, heavy, I would say, companies like General Motors, I don't know, other, that produce something real, I mean, tangible. So it's better to use historical perspective, right? Yes. So, and you can apply these for other type for other companies that in this Yes, for, for IT companies, uh, this, uh, this approach uh, is used more often than the previous one. Mm. Yes, but actually it depends. It depends on the company. Mm -hmm. And all on the industry industry as well. Okay. The next technique. It's about financial projections and valuation. We can uh, one of the most let's say widely known uh, widely known uh, number it's uh, PE ratio. It is uh, the uh, what is PE? It's profit. Uh, it's price uh, of earnings. Yeah. So yes, it's price price for the company uh, divided by earnings of the company. Thank you. Uh, so actually, this um, this is one of the let's say widely known approaches. And if you you know say to an investor PE, he will understand you instantly what what you mean here. And uh, this index, this index is contained 
let's say, at all websites which contain financial data, because it is very important. And for, for Apple, it is equal to 17. And uh, actually, you can, if you Google, uh, just understand uh, which values uh, are good for PE. Uh, you can uh, Google uh, this term, and you will see these um, values by industry. So for some, uh, for some industries, for example, for IT industry, this, uh, uh, this uh, ratio can be very high. And for, let's say, for Russian banks, this ratio is very low. It's uh, the difference between, let's say, traditional business and innovative business. In traditional business, you can, for example, as for GM example, General Motors, you can uh, predict with a very, um, with very high precision your sales, your prices, and the costs which uh, you, know, you will pay for producing cars. As for IT companies, actually in many cases you can't predict, but still you can be sure that uh, uh, they will generate a lot of money. And so this, this ratio was, and still is very high for Facebook. It is uh, even negative for Twitter, because it's earnings, and for, if this is negative, uh, the whole number is negative, and price cannot be negative. This is, by price, we mean the evaluation of the company. For Apple, it's 17, and still some investors believe that this is a small, uh, small ratio for a company like Apple, because uh, it uh, produces uh, not like cars, it produces innovative gadgets. So that is why some investors still uh, invest money in Apple. Okay. Evaluation of the management team. This is the technique which is used in, let's say, innovative companies, again, and uh, for companies which uh, are not, uh, let's say, are not in the tradi traditional business. Uh, a very good example of uh, such a company is uh, Tesla. And yesterday, actually yesterday, there was news that Tesla, according to its uh, CEO, Tesla will be profitable uh, not earlier than 2020 or something like that. So it will be profitable only in several years. Of course, after that news, uh, the price of the stocks fell dramatically by 9%. And uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is an example of how news uh, may affect the price. Uh, but still, the price for this company is very high. It's more than $25 billion. This is because investors believe in the management team, first of all, in the CEO, Elon Musk. And uh, you know that in, in startups, which we study at Skoltech sometimes, in startups, uh, investors, uh, first of all, they are looking for entrepreneurs. And this is the same idea here. So investors, investors uh, look for very strong management teams. And if uh, there is a strong management team, they can evaluate uh, the company much more higher. Okay. Well, where you can find information. So now we look through the techniques which are used uh, in fundamental analysis. And as you see, in fundamental analysis, uh, we mostly use uh, numbers, we use financial statements, we read news about future projections. For example, yesterday uh, there was news about, one more example, uh, there was news that Blackberry, uh, that Samsung maybe will buy Blackberry, or is going to buy, or something like that. After that, just Instantly after uh, that news, the price for uh, the price of BlackBerry uh, grew up by four uh, percent just instantly. Yeah. Is there any online tool which monitors 
the firms which still, which stocks I have. So for example, I have several stocks of Apple and BlackBerry. Is there anything which will be monitoring all the internet in order to catch up those news and give me some yeah. some yeah. data? Yeah. So uh, first of all, you can uh, use Google. But I mean, you, Google you Finance. All the information. I don't want to do that. I just want to catch only the information which is related to the companies and maybe most probably will affect the, the stock market. Actually, there is a website Google Finance. It's not uh, just uh, the, I, I do not mean the Google itself. Mm -hmm. I mean Google Finance. It is a special part of Google, uh, of the Google website. And uh, they have, uh, actually at the end of uh, the class, if we have enough time, I will show you uh, this website online. And it has uh, several tabs. It has very large menu. And you can see not only historical prices and current price of the stock, you can see news, you can see financial statements. Actually, one of those screenshots uh, was made uh, from um, Google Finance website. So you can use those tools. I'm sure that uh, there are some special tools for traders which monitor uh, news and uh, news websites. Uh, but I think that my advice is that for now you can use simple things, you can use simple, simple tools. You can use Google News. One more important uh, tool is Twitter. Uh, because in Twitter, so most uh, breaking news is published uh, first on Twitter. So if you would like to dig deeper into this sphere, I advise you to, op to create an account on Twitter or to take your account on Twitter and to subscribe to, uh, actually, first of all, to these uh, accounts in Twitter. Uh, all of them have, uh, let's say, special, uh, special accounts for financial news. For example, Bloomberg exists both as uh, just Bloomberg and all news. It exists as uh, finance uh, and uh, and other sites, other websites as well. So you can look through <laughs> these websites and uh, maybe through links which I published on Stellar. You can find uh, these websites, find the accounts on Twitter, and you can use your Twitter. And uh, that will be enough for you for the first time, because uh, again. Uh, uh, again, there is a different there is a difference between let's say one minute and one hour, or one day of you know spreading news, but uh, there is no difference for you between one and two seconds because uh, you can be sure that the, there are a lot of uh, robots or you know automatic uh, automatic uh, software which monitors uh, all these pieces of news and uh, it will submit orders faster than you can, even with Twitter or with, let's say, automated tool. Okay. So, will you tell us about the Google bombing? Sorry? Mm -hmm. Will you tell us about Google bombing and how to... Uh, no, I, I remember an example when uh, someone just used uh, a, a financial forum no, it was even not financial, it was a global news forum and it was very old old news about the catastrophe of airplane which happened, uh, which happened, for example, six years ago. And then uh, someone created a lot of bots on that forum and bots voted for this new, or for the, this old news as high rated. And then it was at the top uh, uh, page of this forum, and then Google robots read it and put in uh, uh, somehow in in a search for financial keywords, and then it was at uh, at exchange uh, um, so use, and then a lot of people just uh, just sell uh, stocks of that company who owns that old uh, airplanes, and then. Uh, one people just bought all these stocks and then after 
10 minutes, people understood that it was a mistake, but it's too late, it was too late. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean that we'll have uh, the list of common mistakes, and this is an example of uh, a common mistake when you read news. Uh, this is, uh, uh, let's say, a bad technique which sometimes is used by some people. That is why you need to be extremely careful. And actually, I can uh, reveal you the structure of the course, actually, what, what uh, will go next. Now we are covering trading approaches, just for you to have uh, a sense of how we can, you know, after we saw how we can submit orders to the market, just to give you the sense how we can determine which order we should submit to the market and which stocks we should buy or sell. Then there will be a part about common mistakes on the stock market and so there will be a part about reading news. Then there will be a part about trading strategy and uh, my advice about what to do. And both in the parts with common mistakes and in the part with, uh, let's say, advice what to do, there will be um, some slides devoted to this topic, the topic of news, the topic of other things. As for news, yes, uh, it, is, uh, it is sometimes dangerous to read news, and sometimes just one tweet may influence the current situation on the market. Uh, this, was the, this, is what, this was one example with the airplane. There was one more example with uh, stocks of Apple. And uh, you remember from the previous class that Apple is uh, the largest uh, public company in the world with a market valuation of almost $700 billion. And there was a situation a couple of years ago when just one tweet in Twitter raised the price of Apple stocks by 4%. 4%. It was a tweet like, uh, uh, something like that. Believe in Apple, they do good things, uh, more news to come. Just one, 100 symbols. But it was a tweet of one rather famous trader and one rather famous analyst. And that tweet was, you know, was seen uh, by a lot of people, because he ha he has uh, he had uh, let's say dozens of uh, hundreds of followers on Twitter, they just saw this tweet, and you know what was uh, the next action of those people? They just bought uh, stocks of Apple, and you know there was uh, there was a graph that uh, shows a four percent increase just during I don't know one minute or five minutes or something like that, just because one tweet. And okay. what's next? Just dropped or not? Uh, I don't remember, I, I do not remember that there was any, you know, significant drops after that. Uh, let's say maybe it just grew by 4% and then uh, remained, you know, playing. Okay, yes? Two small questions. The first one, how do you think, was it prepaid? For like yeah. Apple, and the second one is: How do you think <clears throat> can it be a speculation from that analyst in order to increase the stops and to do something? Great question. That is why we will cover the danger of reading news later on. Maybe I don't know because uh, actually no one knows this is why. about. About prepaid actions, uh, I don't think that uh, a company uh, that a company should use these techniques because you know there are some uh, techniques of evaluating of evaluating a company, and actually, you know, if you publish uh, a hundred of tweets, uh, they will not uh, increase your revenue. They will not increase uh, these numbers. But they will increase the price. And yes, they will increase the price for one day, then the price will decrease, and what will you get? You can Actually, the, one, the only thing you get is uh, the increase of volatility of your stocks, and so this is actually a bad thing, because uh, most investors 
are looking for most investors on the stock market are looking for stability. And if okay, if your the price of your stocks is changing like this, do you think they will invest in your company? Okay, and this is uh, this is actually will be bad for you. But it is possible that uh, you know maybe it was a prepaid action by you know a person who had some stocks of Apple in order to sell them. But I don't know. This is just a guess. And but still, it can be very dangerous for reputation. And one more example uh, about such a situation on the Moscow Exchange. Uh, uh, it was a situation with uh, the company AFK System. I think uh, many of you remember recent, uh, let's say, events happened to the CEO, and uh, he he went to jail for some for some time and actually it was it was you know a very large large space for speculations especially on the stock market if you try to open uh, will soon will have a break if you would like to see what happened uh, open open let's say this website number four Find AFK system, but I'm afraid that it is in Russian only. Uh, okay, you can open this website, Google Finance. Find AFK system, then uh, take a one year chart, and uh, you will see this. And you can, uh, you know, com combine uh, the chart with news about the CEO. And for some days it, it will be even more informative to see uh, a one-day chart. So you can see that uh, there was a day, and I remember that day, uh, there was news, actually fake news, that uh, uh, the CEO was free. So okay, uh, without any you know, uh, consequences. And after that, uh, instantly the price of the stocks rose by, uh, I don't remember how many percent, but you know, let's say 20 or 30 percent just during a minute, one minute, and this is you know, unbelievable. But then, in let's say 30 minutes, everyone understood that that was fake news, okay, and the price uh, with the same speed went down. And uh, that was, and a lot of people think that that was speculation. About Apple, we do not know, but about that news, uh, a lot of people think that that was, you know, a very obvious speculation. And that is why, if you are trading, uh, you remember on the previous class, I told you that the risk it is it is highly unlikely that you can lose more than thirty percent during these uh, three weeks. Actually, it is highly unlikely that you can lose more than 15% in one deal. It is extremely, it is highly unlikely. But please do not put your money in AFK system, because this is, you know, I understood that this is the only way how you can lose or earn a lot of money, you know, during one day. Sometimes they have news which dramatically change, changes, uh, you know, the price. So please be careful, because you know that uh, you, Cannot be, you cannot get more information than you know, hundreds of other traders. In this case, you will lose with these uh, drastic changes. Okay. Uh, now we are going to technical analysis, uh, and uh, we have a break in a couple of minutes. Uh, do we have any questions? Let's take maybe a couple of questions about uh, fundamental analysis. Okay, yes please. Am I right that the fundamental analysis works only for long-term uh, periods of time? Great. Long-term investments. Yes, I, want, I wanted to mention uh, this uh, after technical analysis uh, in, in, while we'll be comparing them. But yes, this is a very good uh, point. Technical, and, uh, sorry, fundamental analysis uh, is aimed at uh, long-term investments uh, because we saw 
you remember we saw this you know statement and this is for three months for three months for three months and uh, you understand that the next column will be only in three months so that is why this uh, uh, this is about a long term let's say not long term but short uh, sorry yeah long term uh, investments let's say for four months months or years or something like that and okay there was one more question right no oh yes is it a question Ah, oh, sorry <laughs> okay and uh, yes short question so you just told about the um, financial analysis in terms of reports in terms of the team that leads the company but those are very different things and to uh, analyze any of this field that takes some fair amount of time so what you just mentioned what will be the preference like what will be the first thing to check if you're looking for fundamental analysis for fundamental analysis good question and actually i forgot to mention if you would like to read if you would like to let's say in fundamental analysis to my mind uh, if you would like to use fundamental analysis, you need to spend a uh, decent amount of time into investigating all these terms and how they uh, influence uh, the market price. In this case, you will need uh, to spend uh, much time. Uh, where to start? Uh, I would advise you to start with uh, Uh, reading the biography of this guy and there are a lot of books about him you can choose let's say you can actually go to Amazon or, or any other website you can search and uh, select any of the books which uh, have uh, uh, which have you know four stars or five stars a good rating and you know I, uh, I read uh, two or three books about him and still I would like to read more <laughs> and actually this is this is the answer to the question what to read about about the course about trading about fundamental analysis my advice for you is to start with uh, reading about Warren Buffett and he mentions uh, he usually mentions uh, his teachers and uh, there were traders before Warren Buffett who made also a lot of a lot of money on fundamental <coughs> analysis and he uh, he worked with them you know 50 years ago something like that and he uh, he advises uh, some books for example Peter Lynch was uh, also a very very famous um, fundamental trader so he advises uh, you can find uh, names and you can find books and so that would but uh, the, the list will be long so I can say that, okay this is this one this is one book just read it and everything will be great I need to read a lot of books just to understand how he approaches uh, how fundamental traders how great fundamental traders approach uh, the market uh, and uh, all these terms mm -hmm. and so then and okay and of course uh, it's better to understand these terms but uh, this is not about books it's about just uh, articles but for general philosophy of uh, this approach i advise you to read books about him okay now let's have a break for maybe 10 or 15 minutes let's say we'll continue at uh, 5 40 we will cover technical analysis, and I think that we will be able to cover common mistakes. Or maybe at least we will be able to start material about common mistakes. Okay, we are ready to continue our uh, class. I hope it is an interesting class. And we are going to discuss technical analysis. Before that, I would like to make uh, one more clarification about orders. If you put order saying that you would like to buy Sberban at 62 rubles per share and you would like to buy 100 shares, 
It means that your broker, and as well as the exchange, will execute that order only at 62 rubles per share or less. It means that if you submit an order at price, at a certain price, you will not buy it at a higher price. So the, the deal will not be made at a higher price. So when you submit an order for, let's say, 62 rubles per share, you can be sure that it will be, you will buy it for 62 or less. You can buy it for 61, it's, it will be good for you. And actually, it's uh, the, the work of your broker, and actually a good broker, good broker uh, sometimes uh, slightly changes uh, the order, so that, uh, you know, if the current, uh, if the current uh, bid or ask uh, are lower than or higher than the price, they make a, it's a better deal for you. Okay. And if there are not enough yeah. those who are trying to sell at that price mm -hmm. and you want to buy yeah. 100 and there are only 50 guys who are selling those uh, you will uh, <coughs> you will see at least on those terminal it will be partially executed mm. so you will see status um, um, if you open the terminal for our demo account there is a panel uh, on the bottom of the screen, mm -hmm. and so there are several tabs. There is a tab with your orders. If you select uh, that tab, and uh, you will see your orders, uh, you can see partially executed, or something like that. Mm -hmm. It means uh, that uh, you had an order for buying 200 stocks, and uh, actually you bought only 150, and uh, 50 more are waiting for sellers. Okay, and uh, if, for example, you would like to, if the current, let's say, price uh, is 62, and you would like to buy for 60, uh, you will see, and you submit an order for buying for 60, you will see your, uh, your order in the blotter. So, if, uh, it obviously, you will not be able to buy at 60, because the current price is approximately 62, but you will see your order in blotter. It, uh, you can practice with orders and I advise you to practice with orders a bit more in, in your, during your free time just to see different uh, cases for regular orders. Now you know uh, stop losses and take profits and you can uh, see, you can try to submit orders let's say of Binance Burbank at 100 to see that the broker will execute the deal at a lower price, not 100. You can submit an order with a low price, with a low price, just to see that uh, you will uh, see your order in the blotter. And now we are going to discuss technical analysis. We have covered fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis, it's a very good thing, but it is uh, aimed at uh, long periods, uh, long periods of time, maybe weeks or months or something like that. Sometimes, if there is news, it can be, let's say, within minutes or hours. But in many cases, you invest using te using fundamental fundamental analysis. You invest in a, in stocks um, with, uh, let's say, uh, one or two month uh, horizon. And as for technical analysis, it is more interesting that fundamental analysis in terms of, in terms of uh, the situation when you just begin trading. Okay, and there is the question for the second prize. Who is this person? Yes. Who knows? Okay, uh, this is uh, the question for the second prize for today. Please do, do not uh, Google or do not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. Please email me so that I will be able to identify you next, next class when I will bring prizes for today. Okay, and this is George Soros. He's also a 84-year-old uh, guy. We, uh, let's say, a wealthy person. And he is known as the man who broke the Bank of England. 
I will put, uh, I will post a very interesting link to an article about this uh, situation. It was a situation in uh, a few years ago. Yeah, it, it was a situation which took place not uh, in 90s or in, uh, several years ago. Yeah, it was a situation when there was a significant decrease of the course of British pound versus uh, US dollar. And it was made by just one person. It was the decrease which, uh, which can be compared with the latest decre decrease of Russian ruble. If you remember, uh, it, it was called Black Tuesday, mm -hmm. a situation when uh, the price for US dollar was uh, approximately 80 rubles. And it was just during one day after it decreased. But after this, uh, after this uh, situation, it was Black Wednesday. It, it was called Black Wednesday. Uh, George Soros was able to, you know, to <laughs> decrease uh, the exchange rate for your British pound alone. Just you know, he sold. Uh, he sold approximately. 10, approximately, he used 10 billion dollars in that uh, in that operation, and succeeded. He earned one billion dollars just during one day. It's a good, you know, it's a good uh, earning for one day. <laughs> Even today, when there is inflation, you know. <laughs> so that is why. I called him the best technical trader, and uh, okay, for both uh, best technical trader and best fundamental trader, there are a lot of different opinions. But just for this, just for this thing, I can call him the best technical trader. And uh, after that, he cannot visit England anymore. Officially, <laughs> yeah. Officially, yeah. So, so he, uh, so he, he cannot visit visit England anymore. For he has a lifetime block. Anyway, he's 84. Yeah. Well, so, he it, yeah, he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is about technical analysis. Okay. Um, what's next? What is technical analysis? We saw fundamental analysis. And uh, we saw fundamental analysis as a way of uh, analyzing companies' financial statements. This was pretty logical. And uh, the very good question is, what can be the other way to uh, analyze a company, if, if not analyze its financial statements and projections? Actually, there is a very, let's say, important assumption in the technical analysis that all information all information about uh, recent news, all information about uh, current financial statement of, statement of uh, the company, all information about projections, uh, forecasts, is already reflected in the current price. This is uh, the main and uh, the strongest assumption of the technical analysis. And in this case, what can we analyze? if we do not analyze the financial statements of a company, because we think that uh, they are already reflected in the stock price. In this case, we try to analyze behavior, in general, behavior, behavior of other people who buy and sell the stocks of this company. So this is also a rather strong assumption. assumption. It is about analyzing trends. It is about high frequency trading. It is about um, some assumptions of how traders behave. Let's start with high frequency trading. It is uh, the simplest one for now because it is about making deals during milliseconds. 
and the main there are two main requirements to be which, which you need to uh, which you need to take into account if you would like to be a successful high frequency tra trader. The first one is that you should have servers located near the stock exchange. The second that you need to have much money. That is why it is the most simple, uh, the most simple technique. We can just skip it because for now uh, it would be very hard for us uh, without any additional knowledge uh, to do that. Uh, why do we need servers located near the stock exchange? Because uh, we are trading within milliseconds. In this case, uh, we know that uh, the speed of light is uh, a high number, but still it is a number, it's not infinity. That is why sometimes it takes time <coughs> for, the, um, for the information to be transferred from one, from one point to another point. And uh, servers uh, and space near stock exchange, it is very valuable and precious, and you need to spend much money just to buy uh, or to rent uh, that kind of space. Okay, that is why for us now it is not so interesting. Because we have our 1 million rubles on our account, but it's a demo account, first of all. Secondly, it will not be enough even if we gather all millions here on demo accounts. Still, this method requires sums of money starting from, let's say, dozens of, million, of millions of dollars. Okay, the next approach is trends. And here we can, uh, in technical analysis, actually, we will see more, let's say, more practical, uh, practical approaches which we can use right now, uh, because uh, because in fundamental analysis you need to know a lot of information, a lot of different financial terms. In technical analysis it's about behavior of other people. We can, you know, without any, um, any advanced knowledge we can understand what is the behavior of other people. Or at least we can try to predict without any specific knowledge. Usually, well, so what is, what is a trend? Trend, so let's say, it's a situation when, uh, you, you can imagine what is, what is that. It's a situation when the stocks are going to one direction, uh, there is something like correlation between, let's say, time and uh, the price. And usually trends, uh, trends are connected with the, the term moving average. What is a moving average? Actually, what is, an what is an average number? Average number, it is a number when we just sum several numbers and divide the, some of them into the uh, total count, okay? And this is average. What is a moving average? The moving average appears when we are talking about time and the situation when, you know, Today is today, tomorrow we'll have another day, and uh, time passes. So, if we take the price, if we today take the price of, let's say, Apple stocks, we'll take the price of uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, the day before, before yesterday, etc., etc., and we take just 10 last days by now, and 10 different prices, we sum up those prices and divide them by 10. That would be average for the last 10 days, right? Is, it, is this clear? Yes, please. But for example, yesterday we had like 100 of uh, prices for Apple stock. Which one should we take? Uh, we can take, um, it depends, <laughs> so we can take closing price. No. Uh, sorry? We, we can take uh, the closing price. So, okay. It depends. Uh, these are uh, different approaches. So, um, you know, here in technical analysis, we'll uh, deal with uh, a lot of numbers. And in most cases, there are a lot of different ways how we can calculate something. In this case, we can take closing price. We can, we can take opening price. By closing price, I mean the price at uh, 6.40 p.m. on Moscow Exchange. Uh, by opening price, I mean price at 10 a.m. at Moscow Exchange. We can take average price. 
we can take maximum price or minimum price which um, was hit during the day. Okay, we take those prices for the last 10 days. We calculate the average. But we can understand that tomorrow these numbers will be different because tomorrow uh, 10 previous days will be different from today's 10 previous days. We see that this uh, period of time called uh, 10 last 10 days, it is shifting with, with time from day to day. That is why this average called, not just average, it is called a moving average. Is this clear to everyone? Okay. And um, we can calculate moving averages. We can calculate them using opening price, closing price. We can calculate them uh, using, uh, we calculate them for a certain company, for a certain yeah, company or index, let's say company. And we calculate them for a certain period of time, for 10 days, for example. And we calculate those averages. We can calculate them for different periods of time. And what is, what is trend? Trend, uh, you know, what is, the, what is a trend in terms of common sense? It's a situation uh, when something is growing with some fluctuations, but, uh, you know, it, it is growing in average, in average. And here comes the average. If we take the average and, for example, the 10-day average is increasing, it means that the price in average is also increasing, right? This is one, uh, let's say, way how we catch trends or identify trends. The other way is to compare. It was just with one moving average. Another common approach is to compare two moving averages. One of them, we take one, uh, we take, so we take two moving averages. We take one for a smaller period of time, so let's say 10 day moving average. The other one we take for a long, longer period of time, let's say for 100 days. And we calculate these two averages. And we can compare them and uh, their dynamics. If the moving average for, is, if the shorter moving average is lower than the longer, longer average, it means that now the price is Decreasing average. In the, is this clear? Should we apply the test on this because it's kind of population, so we have to use a couple of moving averages to make the criteria or something. So, do, do you mean some examples or with numbers? Yeah, like students t test or something like this for the. Oh, okay. Uh, I can include that like a test for the next quiz. <laughs> Just uh, this, this, uh, this numbers are pretty simple, and uh, you know the general idea. And for today's class, it's the same. Uh, it's introductory material, so I can explain you what does it mean. Uh, we, um, I think, we shouldn't spend too much time on calculating uh, numbers because you can take Microsoft Excel or something like that <laughs> to calculate this average just to see them on charts. Uh, here I would like to explain you just the general idea. We compare, we take either one average, one moving average, or two moving averages. And if the short moving average is lower than long moving average, it means that during the last several days the price is decreased. I think uh, this is clear. And vice versa. And uh, this is the way how we can identify trends. How does it look like? This is a chart. Actually, actually, this is one of the peculiarities of, fundam of uh, sorry, technical analysis. I don't remember which company is it. Generally. Ah, yeah. Uh, but still, we thank you. But, but still, it uh, for in uh, technical analysis, in most cases, it doesn't matter because we just. Um, uh, look at uh, numbers without any, let's say, financial statements. Okay, uh, this is uh, the chart. We see lots of fluctuations on this chart, and we can see different, let's say, uh, we can we can see uh, the trend. This is a moving average. 
Um, I think it is a 100 day moving average. It is calculated here. Uh, so it is in, uh, yeah. Uh, it is in red or something like that. Do you see it? Yes. So when you see this, uh, this part of uh, the chart, you cannot say that uh, the trend is uh, decreasing. For example, in this place, in this uh, point, in this point, let's say here, in short term, the price is increasing, but actually the trend is decreasing. Uh, so, with moving average, it is possible to understand, it is possible to determine what is the current, let's say, trend. And this is the, this is the idea of uh, trading with trends. So, we need to, to, trade, to trade with trends. This is the technique which I usually use in, in my trading um, you know, attempts. That's why I can, uh, I can describe you, there are a lot of different approaches how we can use trends and how we leverage, leverage them, but I can explain you how, uh, how I personally use uh, these trends. Uh, we need to identify, first we need to identify a trend. There is no just uh, uh, definition, uh, trick, strict mathematical definition that we need to take, let's say, 10-day moving average or 100-day moving average. It's just our, let's say, it's our decision. Here we can decide that we take 100-day moving average and we consider this as a trend. Then we see on the chart what is the, what is the current, uh, let's say, direction of uh, the line, of the moving average. If we see that the line, uh, the direction of the line was the same for a certain period of time, it's again our decision. It's not, you know, strict rule. It's just our decision. If, uh, so okay, if uh, the direction of the line is the same for some period of time, we decide that this is a trend that it will, um, it will, you know, continue, and we follow that trend. As you remember, we can open long position or short position. So for long position, we buy stocks and sell them after some time. In short position, we borrow some stocks, sell them, in order to buy them later when the price will decrease. So here, uh, we, for example, we consider that uh, a trend is a situation when the moving average, a uh, 100 day moving average is decreasing for five days in a row. In this case, uh, let's say here, there will be, let's say, a notification for us that for five days, the, moving, the direction of the moving average was the same. And we can decide that, okay, this is a good signal for us, and we open a short position. What does it mean? It means that we borrow some stocks, sell them on a high price, then it is decreasing, so the price is decreasing. Finally, it uh, reaches the, a certain point where the trend stops. And here we can uh, not only can, we should decide what is our, let's say, criteria for uh, the reversing of the trend, for the trend reverse. Uh, we hardly can, can find uh, a situation when there is just one trend and uh, during uh, hundreds of years it is the same trend. In, in most cases uh, there are situations when we had a decreasing trend, then we have increasing trend, and okay, it can, it can change uh, very frequently, and many times. In this case, we need uh, also to understand what we consider as uh, the end of the trend. We can uh, assume that uh, by the end of uh, the trend, we mean uh, a situation when uh, 
it reversed for, let's say, three days in a row. So we have two definitions for now. Just to our decisions. That uh, the trend starts with three, uh, with uh, five uh, growing days for of moving average, of 100 day moving average, and ends with uh, uh, three, uh, in, three increasing, uh, three reversing um, days. In this case, we will buy stocks, uh, we will open a short position here, and we will sell them somewhere there, in this, at this point. This is the trading based on trends. What are the, what are the main, let's say, peculiarities? In some cases, uh, this uh, strategy works. In some cases, it doesn't work. My advice, I'm, I'm using this technique uh, Every day, so I have some advice. Uh, some advice for you. So, uh, so probably it will never work for Twitter. Yes. Sorry. Huh? It will never work for Twitter. This technique. Uh, maybe, because uh, you see that we here you we use here a 100-day moving average, and we uh, use uh, the criteria of five consequent days of, uh, let's say, increasing or decreasing uh, for the beginning of the trend and three consequent days for uh, the stop of uh, the trend. If uh, Here is a good example how we can make money on trends. But sometimes uh, the price of stocks is changing not, uh, not like this. You know, it's, we, we can see a trend. Sometimes uh, it changes, you know, like this. You see that? Mm -hmm. So, just from, let's say, from $10 to $50, then again to $10, then again to $50, during not hundreds of days, during just one day or two days, if uh, there are a lot of fluctuations, but still, in average, the price is the same or grows a little bit. Uh, that would be an example of a situation when uh, trading with trends will not work. What approach uh, do I use in this situation? Uh, there are a lot of different companies which are trading on uh, financial on the, on the stock exchange. I'm looking for companies which have which have let's say more trends or more Tra um, some, um, something more like trends, not not just uh, movements like this, but uh, trends uh, which uh, last for uh, let's say seven or ten days or let's say fifteen days. So I'm looking for companies where there are trends. You can find companies uh, with. Moving like this, movements like this, where you cannot find trend at all. So I'm analyzing historical data, trying to find companies which uh, which uh, which have trends, and so then um, I uh, decide what is my strategy for trend for this company. I mean, what what is uh, what are the criteria for the trend for this company? And so then I'm I'm trading. I'm, you know, I'm following uh, the algorithm. It is pretty simple. So, and how like, the historical data of a company influences your decision regarding the trend strategy that you're choosing? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm trying to understand what, what uh, is the average duration of a trend. Because for some companies, uh, there are trends uh, which last for uh, not years but months or weeks. For some companies, uh, there are trends which last only during three days at most. In this case, you will have you should have different techniques. If an average trend lasts for 100 days, you should have a criteria criteria a criterion like uh, five consequent days for. Know, for the opening of the trend and three consequent days for the closing of the trend. Mm -hmm. If you have trends which last seven days, you will 
not make any money because uh, you understand uh, the price will grow for seven days after the after the day five on the day six we will open a long position or a short position and so then in a day the uh, the movement will reverse and in this case you will not earn any money you will lose them mm -hmm. okay and actually to my mind it depends on the let's say the the price uh, maybe the hist historical data so for Twitter there was a question about Twitter for Twitter I do not use uh, trends at all actually I do not I, I haven't uh, ever bought or you know, sold uh, Twitter stocks because I do not believe in Twitter it is uh, I, I, I showed you that uh, this is uh, this is not a profitable company that is why I do not believe in this biz in this business in, in this business model. I'm trying to consider IT companies first. That is why I do not uh, buy or sell their shares. Yeah, but also Facebook was like this in the beginning. So yes, uh, okay. This this is a good argument. That is why a lot of people buy Twitter stocks. But uh, okay, uh, this is you know this is a decision of a person. So, for example, you can decide that uh, you like Twitter and you would like to buy its stocks. For me, my decision is that uh, I do not uh, use Twitter as uh, a tool, uh, as, as, as stocks which uh, I'm trading. And uh, these are just decisions of uh, the trader. I think also WhatsApp is losing money right now. Uh, yes, but it, it was purchased uh, by Facebook yeah. and now and it, it wasn't uh, on the stock exchange, so that is why we can't... Uh, uh, buy or sell its stocks. Okay, this part was about trends. So, okay, uh, once again, we uh, summary. Uh, one one more important point. We do not. Uh, so okay. In this position, we open. Uh, in this case, uh, for this part of uh, this graph, we open a short position. And we do not open it at the very beginning. We open we open it just after a few uh, after a few days pass because we need to have a proof that this is actually a trend. Uh, this is uh, that this is a decreasing trend. And at the same time, we do not sell at this point. We sell at this point because we need to have a proof that uh, the trend reversed and now this is an increasing trend so in most uh, articles about trade trading with trends you will see uh, a mark here and the mark there saying that we started here and we started there why didn't we sell these stocks uh, at that point or at that point with the lowest price simply because we cannot predict Okay, if you, if you see historic, historical data, you know, okay, I will be a billionaire in a few days. I should have bought them, uh, should have uh, opened a short position uh, in, at this point, and then closed, uh, should have closed it uh, at that point. But when you are dealing with uh, real data at real time, you are here at that point, and you have a very good decreasing trend. Maybe it will decrease up to this point, uh, and you will get a lot of money. The same situation with this trend. Uh, you should wait uh, till the end of the trend, because uh, if you, okay, uh, let's say if you sell stocks at that point, you will get a significant profit, but you could have uh, got more profit. That is why, okay, we we open a position usually when we have a proof that the trend has begun, and we. Close it when we have a proof that it has finished. Okay, this is about trends. This is one of the most powerful techniques uh, for technical uh, for technical analysis, uh, especially especially if you do not have enough money for high frequency trading. Okay, analyzing behaviors of other traders. This is a uh, Complicated technique, and actually, it's not uh, it's not like a technique. It's an advice. <laughs> and 
what we can notice? We can notice uh, a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, things about other people. For example, about uh, first point is about news. When uh, news uh, is published, some people uh, read this uh, news uh, instantly, almost instantly. First of all, I mean robots. Then after another minute, a lot of uh, humans read uh, the same news. After that, uh, maybe during the first minute, let's say, 20% of traders read the news during one minute. After another hour, 50% of traders read uh, that news, etc., etc. And uh, the point is that information doesn't spread instantly. So there is a certain period of time when uh, the, the news uh, is published, uh, but uh, not all people have read it. This is uh, the point which you can leverage. About news and about uh, distribution of information, we'll have, uh, I, will tell, I will describe you a very interesting theory, which is also used by advanced traders. Actually, I have a very good lecture, but unfortunately it's in Russian, and I can't, uh, I can't uh, include it into this course. About uh, this theory, so I will describe the, you this theory by myself. It will be on our fifth class. So just for the, our schedule, now today is the second class, now we are covering the trading approaches, then we'll cover, during the third class, we'll cover, cover common mistakes on the stock market, we'll cover trading strategy during the third, the third or the fourth class. Uh, and so then we will turn to some very interesting uh, games, math games, and uh, advanced theories, like this one about uh, how, news, uh, how news is spreading. Okay, uh, another point is that, uh, another thing you can notice about behavior is that traders fix profit at the end of the day. It means that uh, in, in, in uh, some cases, or in many cases, uh, I'm not, uh, I do not pretend that this is true for 100% of situations. Actually, yesterday I tried to use this assumption and uh, I lost a small sum of money. <laughs> because actually that uh, assumption didn't work for one company. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in three other cases it worked. So, okay, in many cases this can work. Uh, this is just uh, the analysis of other people's behavior. How does it work? We know that we, we, try, we try to imagine other people who are behind their laptop uh, during the same time as you are. And uh, you understand uh, that, we are trying to understand that they, have, they usually have a nine hour session of trading. And uh, then finally, at the end of the day, sometimes they would like to fix their profit and to, um, to transfer all their money into cash. Just to understand uh, how was uh, how was the whole day, what is uh, their current result in comparison with other points, because sometimes people do not want to lose, uh, do not want to risk with money. Uh, um, I told, um, I described you the gap in the morning, which takes place when uh, there is the closing price, and so then at the beginning the price changes, and there is a certain gap between the closing and the opening prices. So they do not want to risk. That's why in many cases they uh, close uh, their long positions. And uh, more than that, uh, one more point is that uh, this is mostly true for the for the situation when uh, the stock uh, uh, is uh, uh, when the stock was the stock price was growing throughout the day. So let's assume that it is plus. Uh, 3% by the end of the day, traders who bought uh, that uh, stock at the beginning of the day, they made 3% by that uh, long position. Now they would like to close that position to fix the profit and they sell that. So in this case, uh, one of the techniques which you can use is to open short position, let's say uh, 
30 minutes before the market closes. And so then you should close your short position, let's say one minute before the market closes. So uh, what short position, I mean that uh, when it's, let's say, 6 p.m. or something like that on Moscow Exchange, at 6 p.m. you open a short position, you borrow some stocks. This is, this is done automatically. I mean, you just open a short position, meaning that you borrow some stocks and you sell that stock. So then, uh, uh, when uh, just maybe 30 seconds, one minute remains, you buy that stocks. I use uh, this technique, but I use mostly it with, with, not with the short positions, I use it mostly with the long positions, vice versa. So if uh, the price was decreasing during the day, I, I um, uh, try to buy it just approximately a couple of hours before market closes and sell just maybe 30 seconds, uh, maybe 30 seconds before the market closes, something like that. Just my uh, best performance was when I sold stock uh, 17 seconds before the market closes. Just just because the price was rising during during the last two minutes, it was essential to sell to sell stocks as as close to the market close as as possible. That is why I was waiting and I was. Uh, you know, I was a bit nervous about my internet connection because uh, <laughs> you understand that. 17 or 17? 17. 17. So just 17 seconds. Ah. Okay. It was risky because uh, if uh, I didn't have enough time, uh, okay, the market uh, will close in you know, more than 10 or 15 seconds when I understand that I wasn't able to sell it. Okay, and um, yes, and sometimes uh, I used this technique in. Uh, uh, many cases, and uh, let's say in 60 or 70 percent of cases it worked. But okay, it, it is. Uh, uh, you remember the disclaimer that your money is your money, and uh, <laughs> I can't guarantee you that uh, this technique will will work. So, and the average profit on the second technique is like half a percent, yes. Something like that, yes. Uh, Yes, uh, but this is uh, this is a good uh, this is good profit for one day. For, so if you have half half percent during one day, you multiply that by uh, let's say two hundred fifty. I mean the number of business day a year, you will receive uh, you will get more than one hundred percent per year. And uh, yeah, and uh, just one more remark about. Uh, Trading and about analysis about these techniques. I'm not sure that you will be able to find a technique which works 100% of times. In most cases, uh, there are techniques which work, let's say, 40% of times, 50% of times, 60% of times, 60% of cases. Uh, and it is enough, actually, if uh, you have a strategy which works uh, 60, in 60% uh, of cases and uh, in 40% of cases it doesn't work, uh, and we have an assumption that your profit and losses are the same, so the math expectation of using this strategy is positive, and this is enough. Okay, so it, it is uh, very hard to earn uh, a lot of money on the stock market, especially when you start to do that, when you start trading. So uh, it's uh, it's a good uh, let's say it's a good strategy if you are right in sixty percent of cases, <coughs> except for situations when in other forty percent of uh, situations you lost all your money, you lose all your money. You need just to calculate math expectation, something like that. It is very difficult because no one knows what will happen tomorrow, but you can. Um, uh, you can somehow try to estimate what what are the probabilities. So, okay. Yes, please. Could you tell a little bit, a bit about the possibilities? I have seen the risk section in uh, Trader. Uh, so uh, I try to to, to uh, 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 about my tens of one I have. So uh, the risk were also uh, the margin of ten percent. Am I right that if I try to play with, for example, the half of the money I have on my account, I will have the risk also about ten percent? 
actually, actually, I do not uh, know what do they mean in the terminal by risk, because I, uh, let's say, I, I calculate for myself, I, I cal calculate risk differently. So, for, uh, and uh, for me, I usually use uh, the following principle. Uh, when when uh, I want to do something, when I want to, let's say, to buy some stocks or to sell some stocks or to submit an order to the stock market, I'm trying to understand what are the possible outcomes, like in, you know, in uh, probabilistic theory. I'm trying to understand what are the possible outcomes and their probability, probabilities. And uh, I'm calculating the math expectation of uh, the, all the situations. And if it is positive, uh, I submit that order. But in this case, there are a lot of assumptions because it is on the your estimation of uh, the probabilities of, uh, the, you know, of the positive result. So I think, I think, for example, that in, let's say, in 60% of situations, in 60% of situations, the price at the end of the day uh, will uh, decrease, and in 40% it will increase. And uh, I know that uh, if it uh, increases, I can, I lose x, and if it decreases, I lose y. So in this case, I calculate math expectation very simply, and uh, okay put some numbers, if it's positive, I do the deal. Okay. And uh, the third one, it's uh, the most, uh, let's say, a uh, most uh, widely known uh, technique about uh, technical analysis, it's analyzing shapes of curves. I do not believe in this technique, so it, it is very hard for me to be objective in this matter, but still uh, some people think that there are some common shapes like um, head, head and shoulders, it means that, uh, oh, sorry, I don't mean the shampoo, I mean, <laughs> I mean uh, the graph which starts from, uh, let's say, increase, then decrease, then increase, then decrease, and they Mm, they assume that then there will be a small increase and a, a large decrease. So they think that if they uh, are able to find a certain shape on the market, uh, it will be the same for most situations. Again, they, uh, it is enough for them to be true in 60% of situations. They can be wrong in 40%, uh, assuming that uh, the math ex expectation to the Profit will be larger than their losses. Okay. How we can find, as for technical analysis, uh, we try to find some peculiarities, like trends. As uh, I described before, when, when we were talking about trends, we are trying to find stocks where trends uh, are, when, where trends usually consist of like seven days, 100 days. In this case, we need to, first of all, uh, it's better to look at uh, some historical performance of that stocks. And uh, there, uh, there are some websites where you can find, uh, find information. And in many, uh, at many websites, it is possible to build some complicated charts so that uh, you can compare, compare them uh, at this website, uh, it, is, uh, it is possible to download some data in CSV format so that uh, you'll be able to download it and to write some code. Because, for example, for trends, it is, uh, let's say, for trends, you will need to calculate moving averages. For moving averages, uh, I'm not sure that you will uh, simply calculate the number of trends in, on this chart or maybe the moving average on this chart. That is why you can go to any of these sites, download some data, and write a program uh, which parses CSV file and uh, calculate moving averages or something like that. I'm a fan of trends. Sorry, I always uh, mention trends first of all. Uh, 
Or maybe you can uh, use different uh, shapes. Uh, you can write a parser which understands that, for example, this is the shape of uh, shoulder, head, and shoulder, or something like that. Okay. Uh, what what do we have next? We finished with uh, discussing trading approaches. General advice uh, is that now you have some understanding of different trading approaches, trading approaches, and techniques which are used in these trading approaches. More information I will post on Stellar about some additional. Uh, additional articles which uh, describe uh, <coughs> techniques in more details. For example, how we can uh, use PE, uh, PE ratio in um, fundamental analysis, how we can uh, use trends or shapes or high frequency trading. And uh, my advice for you is to read a bunch of articles, uh, look for this presentation again, and uh, to select one technique, first of all, to select one approach which you like best, a fundamental approach or, techni or technical uh, analysis, and then try to find, uh, try to select uh, a technique and study it. Uh, I mean, read some articles about that technique, so that you will be able to understand and to maybe to create your trading strategy. So what is a trading strategy? We will discuss it uh, on, uh, in a week. And for, for that purpose, uh, you need to, you know, to, I think it's, it would be better for you to select one uh, just trading approach and trading technique and to study it so that you will be able to use it uh, later on. Okay. Uh, we have a Q&A session right now, and uh, we have 15 minutes left. Uh, I have uh, a feedback form. Oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. This is the feedback form. Uh, so now please uh, go with this link. Uh, thank you for your feedback. Now the link is more, let's say, it's it's more readable. All right. Thank you. It's. Uh, I hope that uh, this is easier to type in your browser's window. Okay. And uh, at the same time, uh, I'm ready to answer questions. We have. Uh, 15 minutes for questions, for discussions. Yes, please. How to stay calm? <laughs> to what? I mean, when you're working with, with uh, lots of money, you need to be calm in order not to be in panic and sell the stocks to damage your account and so on. This is very hard. That's why I'm here. Now I'm trading with a decent sum of money, and okay, I can say that this is really hard. And uh, okay, four days ago I had a very, uh, very difficult situation when there was uh, there was a, uh, some bad things happen on the market, and it was really hard. And uh, uh, next time we will cover some common advice. This uh, today we covered trading approaches. So the ways how you can um, build your trading strategy, how you can make decisions. Next time we will cover some common advice, uh, which uh, are not about a strategy, which are about how you can avoid mistakes. And one of the, uh, one of, uh, the advice is that you should have very strong discipline and not be too emotional. And uh, when you have both emotions and math, math should win in your okay, Math, math uh, should have uh, huge priority in your decision making. Otherwise, uh, you, you are under risk, under huge risk. Yes, please. Uh, I have questions about 
how it is possible to evaluate a CO uh, so managers did you mention it uh, in fundamental analysis as part of as part yes. of how I, I, so it is just so if this manager is good then in the so which rules are used to usually I Investors usually, usually analyze a CE positions, uh, so CEO, CFO, etc. How you can find information about those people? Uh, on Google Finance... No, no, which indicators are important? Which indicators? Uh, the same indicators uh, as in uh, startups. Uh, so, uh, investors uh, would like to be sure that uh, that top managers of this company will be able to build a huge company. So how do they do that? This is about uh, maybe a, a special course in investments or something like I2I, I, Ideas to Impact at Skoltech, where you can, you can see what are the requirements for entrepreneurs. Okay. So the requirements are the same. <coughs> maybe they differ a bit uh, in the size of the company so that um, when you have a small startup uh, with just a uh, reviewing of portfolio of this CEO manager so, or CV of them and to understand so these people have is more experienced than that so I believe mm -hmm. they can okay, go, just googling uh, gives you a lot of information about a person uh, so um, uh, unfortunately, I do not remember the exact number of employees in uh, Warren Buffett's company, but uh, they have a lot of analysts who spend uh, a lot of time who spend a lot of time on uh, analyzing data, data and uh, news and uh, trends and uh, CVs or let's say backgrounds of entrepreneurs. So. Okay. Advanced, uh, let's say, perfect traders, so they have enough resources to hire a person who will be monitoring and who will be gathering information about uh, the management of the company. Yes, please, okay. Yeah. Uh, in your uh, trend based strategies, uh, do you take all the decisions manually? Or are there some automated triggers that uh, trigger operations financing? Personally, I uh, do everything manually. So the reason for that is that uh, there is there is a very good book called The Black Swan, and uh, I will publish it. Uh, I wanted to publish it uh, today on Stellar, I mean uh, the link to that book. Uh, I will publish it by the end of the week. So this is one of the basic books which I advise you to read. Uh, so first first was the book about Warren Buffett. Then comes this book, uh, The Black Swan. And it uh, says that the main idea of the book is that sometimes uh, unexpected things happen. and. These things uh, usually were not predicted, first. Secondly, when uh, these things happen, there are a lot of people who will tell you that uh, they predicted this thing. So we can take uh, in any crisis, let's say, crisis, let's say, crisis of 1929 in the US and uh, now we can okay in every book about economics you can read a definition and a lot of reasons why that uh, global depression took place in 1929 but in 1928 when this knowledge was extremely precious you hardly can find any person who would tell you that. And uh, this is the reason why I do everything manually. This is just my opinion. Okay, there are a lot of uh, automated traders on the market and uh, 
let's say three years ago, I heard statistics that approximately 40% 40 40 of traders on Moscow Exchange are robots. And uh, maybe, okay, you can write a very good robot which will, which will get you a lot of money, which will give you a lot of money. Uh, but uh, to my mind, uh, I'm trying to avoid some unpredictable situations. And uh, in this case, uh, the only way how, can, how I can process them is manually. Because uh, a machine, you can, you can, learn, you can uh, teach a machine only with uh, historical data. And sometimes thi things which uh, have never happened before, they occur. And uh, in this case, only manually you can uh, find out what to do next. Just follow up. Uh, do you think that it's uh, feasible to write code without access to real-time data in the millisecond distance? To write code which does what? Uh, which uh, buys and sells stock. Uh, in order to buy, uh, what uh, it means? Um, it depends on what you are implying by buys and sells. It outputs. What does it do? Submit some order to the stock exchange. In this case, you will need to API. Uh, to connect with stock exchange. No, I mean uh, a trading robot that, uh, that uh, isn't a real-time robot, but uh, uses success for that, uh, like we have, we can afford to have. Not high frequency. Not high frequency, for example. Okay, you, you can write that robot, you can write uh, any robot you want. So, okay, uh, maybe, uh, first of all, it's better to write a robot which uh, will uh, have a positive result on historical data, first of all. And secondly, you'll tr you may try to use it with uh, real-time data and with real money, but still uh, be careful because you know historical data doesn't mean that it will continue to be the same. For example, this week was, you know, today is what day? First day, first day. This week I saw on the market a lot of uh, events which uh, have never happened before. Before that, like but, what? Um, first of all, there was uh, those news that actually it was about situations when some uh, stocks they uh, updated their lowest prices. So it means that uh, this is the simplest example. You you can have uh, a stock which. Uh, which price was between, let's say, fifty dollars and one hundred dollars, and you write, you wrote uh, a robot which uh, buys at fifty and sells at one hundred. But then uh, an unexpected, uh, and this uh, this um, thing works perfect with historical data. But then suddenly they publish a report that this company has huge troubles with their finances and then the price uh, falls behind fifty dollars no, and in I, this in this case yeah does those things really happen in your practice those dramatic yes. changes that happens like in hours and, and it falls from i don't know seventy dollars to forty dollars dramatically i saw i saw something like uh, ten percent changes yeah so my, many times that were not uh, that were that couldn't be expected. So there was no trend that was going higher and higher Just and higher and, and no no trend. Time. Usually with with news. So if you are a fundamental trader, mm -hmm. you could have predicted such things because okay, if you see financial statement of a company and so there is a forecast that it will go bankrupt, okay, uh, maybe mm -hmm. it will go bankrupt and you could have predicted that. With trends, uh, I saw a lot of uh, sudden things, like, okay, suddenly it decreases with 10%. Actually, it was because of some news about a competitor, or some news about something else. But, okay. So, when you do that analysis, you also read some news articles and trying to predict what it could look like? Uh, in a few as days. for me, I usually do not read news. I'm trying to use technical approach. so. What does technical approach says that uh, we that all news, all financial statements, uh, everything else is already included into the price. So if uh, the stock is falling, 
I'm just understanding that something bad happened, and uh, I'm selling that stock. The reason why I'm asking is that you say that computer program, a robot, can't um, work with cases that are unlikely, something like that. The thing that you didn't put into it. And the same thing applies to you as a trader, as a person. You do not expect it, that price to fall as soon as you do not trade and use. And that falls, and nor you couldn't expect it, nor the robot couldn't, so what's yeah, different? Yeah, but I can, make, uh, I can make a decision faster than the robot, because if you have a robot which is connected to the ex stock exchange, mm -hmm. and it doesn't know what to do, it maybe it will send a signal to someone uh, that, okay, an unexpected situation or something like that. I'm, and, and that sometime will happen, uh, some, sometime will pass before uh, that guy will come to the laptop. And I, I see all oh. prices real time. In this case, I see, okay, it, it, fall, it is falling behind $50, it's 49 okay, this is unexpected, I'm closing the position. But maybe I can decide that, okay, it's nine, now 49 it will again uh, come to 50 feet, 55. So you're talking mostly about like technical problems. So it might like just die and you will lose lots of money just because the program died. Yeah? Or not? Something like that. Ah, okay. It's just my opinion. A lot of people make uh, much money with robots and this is a fact. A lot of people make money without robots. This is also a fact. And how, much, how, much people, uh, how many people lose money with robots? Ninety percent. I mentioned that. Sorry. Sorry. With robots? With robots? Yes. I don't have this statistic. Okay. Statistics, we'll unfortunately. <laughs> and okay. Uh, next time we will be talking about common mistakes. Actually, I had slides for today, but um, we'll cover this topic next time. Uh, and uh, we will see why uh, trading with robots is also dangerous, as uh, is the same as, as also dangerous as reading news. Yes, uh, and uh, so, okay. Thank you for for coming today. Please uh, submit this feedback form until I don't know until Saturday or Sunday or. Uh, uh, as quick as possible for me so to prepare the slides for Tuesday. Okay, thank you.